In this video, I'm going to take a look at ionic equations. Before I go into an actual example, what is an ionic equation? Basically, it just tells us what's involved in a chemical reaction. In other words, what's changed. So I'm going to use this reaction to illustrate. So this is a reasonably simple one, and then we'll have a look at a more complicated one um, to finish. So what have we got here? We've got aqueous sodium chloride reacting with aqueous silver nitrate, and that goes to make aqueous sodium nitrate and solid silver chloride. So the state symbols I was trying to emphasize there, they're really, really important. So if you imagine the beaker that this is carried out in, you've got your sodium chloride solution and your silver nitrate solution at the start of the reaction, and at the end of the reaction, you've got this sodium nitrate solution and you've got this solid precipitate of the silver chloride. Next thing I need to do is think about, well, what will this actually be inside this beaker? Well, it won't go around as sodium chloride bonded together. Because they're aqueous, that means they're dissolved, and so you're going to have separate sodium ions and separate chloride ions. Likewise, silver nitrate, you're going to have separate silver ions, separate nitrate ions, how did I know that? Well, these are both ionic substances made of metals and non-metals, and they are aqueous. How did I know that? From the state symbol. So to illustrate that, I've drawn the ions out separately because they would be free to move around in that beaker because they're all dissolved. And then if we move on to the after beaker, so at the end of the reaction, you can see we've got another aqueous ionic substance here, sodium nitrate and we've got the solid precipitate of silver chloride. So what's this going to look like? We're going to have these separate aqueous sodium ions and nitrate ions, but we've still got the silver chloride precipitate, the solid silver chloride still bonded together in this solid. So basically all the ion equation does is reflect what's changed. So you can see at the start we have got aqueous sodium ions and we've also got them at the end. They haven't changed, and so we can basically ignore them. So I'm going to cancel those out. What else hasn't changed? Those aqueous nitrate ions. So my ion equation is going to be this aqueous silver ion plus the aqueous chloride ion reacting to form solid silver chloride. The other thing to mention at this point is the special name that we give to the ions that we've cancelled out, the ones that don't change. These are known as spectator ions. How do you know if something exists as aqueous ions? Well, there are two scenarios. So the first one is soluble ionic compounds. So how do you know it's ionic? It's a metal bonded to a non-metal in a compound. How do you know it's soluble? It has the aqueous state symbol. So the examples I've got here are the ones in that equation we've just seen, aqueous sodium chloride and aqueous silver nitrate. And the other scenario that didn't feature in that reaction, but it is gonna feature in a moment, acids and bases with the AQ state symbol. So examples, these are all acids. So we've got hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and now the bases, sodium hydroxide, notice they're all aqueous, and this one here is also a base, so we've got aqueous ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so we'll move on to this one now. So it's a little bit trickier than the first one. If you wanna have a go at this, by the way, just pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so what have we got in this equation? Well, we've got aqueous barium chloride, got aqueous sulfuric acid, we've got solid barium sulfate, and we've got aqueous hydrochloric acid. So I'll do the beaker treatment now. So remember what we said before, if it's aqueous ionic, then we show the ions. So if you look, we've got a barium two plus ion, aqueous, but we've got two aqueous chloride ions because the way these ions work together in the formula, you need two chloride ions for every barium two plus ion. 
So you can see I've got that two there. Common mistake here would be I, I see students writing down the formula like that. There's no such thing as Cl2 with a one minus charge. If we move on to the sulfuric acid, so remember we show these as ions as well because it's an aqueous acid. So which ions are present in sulfuric acid? We've got two H plus ions, so there they are there, and we've got one sulfate ion, so there, there's that there. Moving on to the products, we've got this solid precipitate of barium sulfate, and we've got two moles of hydrochloric acid, aqueous acid, so we show the ions. So we've got two H plus ions, aqueous, and two chloride ions, aqueous. So let's just cancel out the spectator ions. So we've got two chloride ions spectating and two H plus ions as well. So the ion equation is going to be Ba2 plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous going to be a SO4 solid. Okay, so the third and final reaction we're going to look at is this one here. And the reason I've chosen this one is we've got liquids and gases in the equation as well. And we've not seen those yet. So the reaction involves aqueous potassium carbonate reacting with aqueous nitric acid. And it makes aqueous potassium nitrate, water and carbon dioxide. Let's bring the beakers into play. So what have we got? Well, this is aqueous and it's ionic, metals and non-metals. So we show the ions. So we've got two K plus ions. Potassium's ion is K plus, not K2. So K plus aqueous, but there's two of them in the formula. So we have the two in front. We've got one carbonate ion in this um, substance. So we show that as a aqueous carbonate ion. We've got two moles of nitric acid in the balanced equation. So it's two H plus aqueous, two nitrate aqueous. Well, there they are there. Moving on to the products, we've got two K pluses, two nitrate ions. H2O stays as H2O. So this is why I'm bringing this example in now. And CO2 gas stays as CO2 gas. Cancelling out the spectator ions, 2K plus and 2 nitrate. So the ion equation is going to be the reaction between a carbonate ion aqueous and 2 H plus ions aqueous, making H2O L liquid and CO2 gas. Final slide now, I'm sure you're delighted to hear. So this is my top tips for ion equations. If the substance is aqueous and exists as ions, obviously, you show the ions. If it's a solid, a liquid or a gas, you leave it alone. Hope that was helpful. Cheers, bye.